What's going on guys? So I am still out here in Santa Barbara, California at the Living Vehicle Showroom. I guess that's probably what you want to call it. They have an absolutely beautiful array of living vehicle RVs and boy, these things are built so well. And you know, when it comes to RVs, you guys know I tour a ton of units. One thing I can absolutely say is that these are probably the best, if not among the best built RVs I have ever featured on my channel. There's just so much to like about them, but more importantly, the attention to detail from the owners is, is probably the critical piece of this. The fact is they care so much about their product that they keep in communication with every owner, and having that type of relationship is very important, especially if you wanna turn out a top quality product with minimal problems. That said, when you buy one of these, you have to understand something, and that is you are getting into a very, very heavy conventionally towed unit. Now they do have a fifth wheel version of one of these. It's actually this, but with a fifth wheel overhang on it. But the thing here to keep in mind is that any of them that you get are gonna be heavy. We're talking about starting at 14,000 pound GVWR for a conventionally towed trailer. That means we're hanging a hitch off the back receiver of a pickup truck, not over the axle. So you got a 14,000 pound in their smallest configuration. Then you have an 18,000 pound unit over there. And this one right here, this behemoth is 20,000 pound GVWR, which means that's a lot of weight. That is as heavy as some heavy fifth wheels. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna talk about the right type of truck. And you've probably seen this really, really cool Ram 4500 truck with super singles on the back. Full Kelderman air ride suspension. This is a behemoth. This thing is super cool. And they have this out here as an example of the type of truck that you might wanna to get to haul one of these, which clearly indicates the fact that this is not the type of travel trailer that you would haul with the typical off the dealership half ton or three quarter ton pickup truck. But right here, we're talking about something that's 20,000 pounds GVWR. So this video is specifically to talk to you about the type of truck you would need to consider getting or having if you're gonna haul something like this. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with Matt. Matt is one of the owners here at Living Vehicle. And you know, so far what you've shown me and the videos we've put out on these products just highlights the fact that you care about your product. This isn't some huge corporate conglomerate that is just trying to get as many units out as possible. You guys make a very small number of these and every single one of these units, I would probably say you guys personally walk through. Right? Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, this is a bootstrap company from day one. Um, this is just a, a great lesson in learning by doing uh, and growing experience over the years. We've been doing this for over 20 years. We know every one of our customers and what you see here is just a manifestation of us living this life and building it over time, you know, and wanting to put quality first every step of the way. And this goes back to when they were living in an Airstream. Yep. Right. And then you figured out what you didn't like about it, what you needed to do to make it better, some of the changes that need to happen. And this is an evolution from brands that people may have already presumed to be quality brands. So you basically said, no, that's that's not what it what it needs to be. Let's make something and let's make it right the first time. Yeah, and Airstreams, for example, I've, I've remodeled over 400 Airstreams back in my day. Um, and one of the things I learned is that when I was living in an Airstream trailer, it wasn't really built for full-time living. You know, it was lightweight, it was smaller, built for camping. Um, and they're, they're a great product, but this is fundamentally different. It's an evolution of us wanting to build something for full-time use and kind of throw out all the compromises that were limiting factors at the time and say, hey, it's gonna be a heavy trailer. It's gonna have all the technology, all the weight associated with building something really quality. And when you're doing that, you're gonna have a unit that's built to be on some land and kind of stay there for an extended period of time off the grid you're going to need a lot of space and capacity to carry along batteries and water and a lot of equipment to give you those luxuries you know when you're out in the middle of nowhere yep. and one cool thing to mention here though is you're not just some humdrum guy off the street that decided to get into this what's your education background uh, so i'm a licensed architect in the state of california um you know that's a recovering architect if you will but uh kind of came from that, got a degree in there, got licensed in the state, and then decided to uh, move on to, you know, open up my own company. And that's what 
you know, brought on this. It uh, started as a, a one-man one shop and it evolved into a, a brand about 15, 17 years later. Yep, and we have a full video on talking about the origin of this brand and where it came from. And you need to watch that video before you, you judge what you're looking at. And what I mean by that is this right here, again, wasn't just some humdrum idea to come up with something super cool, super expensive and super heavy. This was an evolution from living in RVs, living in boats, understanding how they're engineered, how they're designed, where the flaws are, why things break, and wanting something that's gonna last you forever. And I know forever is not really the term you should use in this industry, but this is gonna last you potentially a lifetime if you take care of it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's why we built it off of this kind of platform to where you don't necessarily have an engine that is going to depreciate over time with every mile you drive. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you can upgrade over time. And as it's built on an aluminum chassis, you know, that, that is lightweight, but we built it like a tank. You know, yep. it's built to withstand, you know, sustain time. Yep. And what you just said perfectly makes sense with the point of this video. It's built like a tank. They did not say, man, we have to keep this thing super lightweight because there's a guy in a half ton that's going to want this and this thing has to be half ton towable. It, it's even probably arguable to say that this isn't even three quarter ton towable. I wouldn't, for most I wouldn't tow it with a three quarter ton platform. Yeah, I mean, you could, you know, you could tell the, you could tow the 24 foot HD model with a three quarter, mm -hmm. but you know, the beauty about modern day, you know, trailering is that we have amazing trucks out today. Um, the capacities and capabilities of modern day trucks in 2023 are fantastic. I mean, the big three, I mean, they're all pumping out amazing trucks yep. these days. And they've all proven themselves. Their engine transmission platforms, I know people are gonna chime in on CP4 fuel, or fuel pumps, but the fact is that everything is very reliable these days. That said, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, 14,000 pound GVWR, 18,000 pound, 20,000 pound, but these all have like 5,000 pounds worth of cargo capacity exactly. above their dry weight. Yep, so the uh, HD24, that starts around 9,000 pound base, so you've got a good 5,000 pounds to take along with you. And that's one of the things, if you're gonna build this thing for full-time occupancy, winter and summer, I mean, all year round, you're gonna take a lot of stuff with you and you need that extra space to carry along with you. So while it's 14,000 pound top, top top number you got a lot of space to take stuff with you yep and that's the that's probably the most important aspect of this is that if you can truly find 5,000 pounds or two and a half tons worth of stuff to put inside one of these trailers to take with you, you're probably doing something wrong. I mean, I, it, <laughs> you it's got a lot of have, stuff. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of storage in there. And it's great to have the overload, but full tanks and everything in there, you're not going to have two and a half tons well, worth Well, I mean, of extra th but think about it. I mean, you've got a 100 pound or 100 gallon water tank. You know, there's 800 pounds right there. You yeah. know, so I mean, stuff adds up quick, and we've built these things for full time use. So you're going to, while you might not fill it all the way up, I mean, you're going to have the option, you yeah. know, in case you need it, because, you know, those are the best options have the best choices. Yeah, on average, I would probably guesstimate that you'll probably have close to 2,000 pounds yep. if you really load one of these up. Yep, I'd agree. Yep, so in reality, yeah, three quarter ton truck, many modern trucks, especially with the higher gross vehicle weight rating, a lot of them having like an 11,000 or 11,500 pound GVWR for the truck, a lot of them can get away towing those, especially these brand new trucks that have really insane conventional towing numbers. So it really comes down to just having the right truck. He's not saying, and I'm not saying, that you must have an F350 or a Ram 4500. You just want to know what truck you have and you want to be sure that both your conventional towing capacity as well as your hitch weight capacity are in line with whatever you're going to be towing. And I think for the most part you'll be there. But what's really cool though is in many cases something like this one over here, the, uh, the 14,000 pound unit, you can get away with a gas engine which is gonna give you some payload capacity back in, in terms of the truck's weight. Because when you opt a truck with a gas engine versus a diesel engine, the truck weighs about 800 pounds less than it would normally weigh with a diesel engine. And that gives you that 800 pounds back in terms of payload capacity. So you can see some really high payload capacity numbers on three quarter ton trucks if and they have know, a gas engine. What's great about having additional payload like that is since we have these bumper pull trailers, you have the bed, which is free. So yep. that's kind of your carry garage. You can take stuff with you. So while we do have the fifth wheel style, you know, it's the GT series. Um, if you want to keep that bed free and available, a bumper pull conventional style setup, you know, works great. You can yep. carry those things in your bed with you. And I can see a lot of people who might have something like this might actually have like the ramp system on the back of their truck with an ATV on the exactly. back. Exactly, yep. And they're going to carry a lot of stuff in the bed of the truck. The perk of going to something like this over a fifth wheel style connection is the fact that you get your truck bed back. Exactly. And storage 
in your truck is really important just as it is in your RV. But that said, kind of digressing back a little bit, they have their F-350 here. We looked at the sticker a little earlier. It was a little north of 3,300 pounds, I believe, mm -hmm. cargo yep. capacity. Payload. Yep. Yep. So you got a good amount of cargo capacity in a truck like this. As far as tongue weight, what can you typically expect from a tongue weight perspective? I guess starting with your lightest unit and then working up to your heavier units. Well, let's just talk in terms of GVWR. So say you completely loaded this thing up all the way to the gills. Um, you're at 14,000 pounds. GVWR, you know, your tongue weight's going to be about 10% of that. Okay. Um, you know, you might be a little bit north, depending, depending on weight distribution, where you load stuff up. But that's how we design the storage compartments in it. So you're probably running about 1,400 pounds of tongue weight on the uh, GT, uh, actually the uh, the HD24, and so you know if you got 1,400 pounds, you got another 15, 1,600 pounds of additional carrying capacity on this truck. Uh, your 350. Yep, and even if you look at the heaviest unit right here at 20,000 pounds GVWR, assuming you fill it all the way up, let's assume you're a little heavier than 10%. I know 10% yep, is always so the 10 target. So 10 to 15, yeah. you know, you can range, of course. Yeah, you're still going to be under, well under what your conventional capacity is on the truck, which is really what matters. That's the goal. You don't want to get a three-quarter ton truck. Let's say you get a 20, 2015 F250 with a diesel engine. And if you just think, because I have an F-250, I'm good to go, you may be shocked once you realize that your truck might only have 2,000 pounds worth of cargo capacity because it has a diesel engine, it's four-wheel drive, it's crew cab, and it has a 10,000 pound GVWR, which means the dry weight or curb weight of your truck is only gonna be maybe 8,000 pounds, which means you have 2,000 pounds worth of cargo capacity remaining. So you always want to understand the truck you have. And the door sticker is one really, really great way of looking at that, but it's not always the thing you want to look at completely to fill out the picture. And what I mean by that is, like if you look at a GM truck, now they put a trailering sticker there. And it's very clear what conventional tongue weight capacity is versus fifth weight tongue weight, tongue weight capacity. And they try to factor in the weight of everybody in the truck as well. Because the, the number I typically throw it is about 900 pounds for a family of four. Yep. Once you factor in all the people sitting in the truck and the gear you throw in the back, you're usually around 900 pounds. Now, if it's only a couple, well, you're gonna have less weight in the truck that adds up against your cargo capacity. If it's only one person, well, even less weight, and it gives you more cargo capacity back. But you need to understand those numbers, especially if you're gonna be hauling something like this down the road, because this is massive, it's heavy, it's wide. And quite frankly, if you're not careful, especially how you load things up and how you manage weight, you can easily find yourself in a situation where the trailer is controlling the truck and you don't want that. Yeah, you don't want that. You know, and every truck's different. I mean, you can have a, a make, a model, and a, a trim level, and like you gotta really pay attention to that sticker because, you know, the, the payload can vary widely yep. from model to model. Um, you know, also, I believe, you know, you want to have additional capacity. So building that buffer, you know, that's a real <laughs> kind of core tenant of proper trailering is that mm -hmm. you don't want to be right at your max. You know, and if you are, you know, you're always running lean and you don't want that. Yep, and a good point to bring up is that I was recently out at the Ford event and we showed an F450 that was hauling 48,000 pounds, or sorry, 40,000 pounds. The combined weight, the GCWR was 48,000 pounds. Wow. 40,000 pounds behind a pickup truck, dually pickup truck. And a lot of people were like, that's insane. Um, you know, you're just asking to get in an accident. You, you won't be able to stop it. Believe it or not, the truck manufacturers actually designed the trucks to be able to do that. They designed the trucks to be able to handle the weight. But that said, I would never put that much weight behind one of those trucks. It's knowing that you have the capability, even though you may not need it. And then the other thing you want to pay attention to is that a proper trailer system to make sure the running gear on the trailer is equipped to be able to tow and you know safely go down the road at those at those weight levels. I mean, you want to make sure you have stuff like electric over hydraulic disc brakes. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You can have that additional stopping power. So the HD living vehicle is equipped with that kind of stuff. I mean, to have the right kind of running gear, that's what adds to that safety level of towing. Yep, you want the margin to always be in favor of the truck's capabilities. And that's the key here is that's all we're trying to say. We're not trying to say that the truck you have is a bad truck. We're not trying to say that the truck you have isn't the right truck, it may be. But the, the reality here is, is you wanna be sure you have margins above what you need in favor of the truck, which means the truck is more capable than what you need, just to give you that safety factor. If you're gonna be hauling your family down the road, if you're gonna be around other people on the road, that's the key here is you put other people's lives at risk when you're not doing things the safe way. Now, real quick, 
You got some modifications to this truck. We do. Not yeah. nearly as many as that Ram over there. That yep. Ram is yep. completely decked That's out. That's been decked out, yep. The point I wanna make here is, before I let you dive into your modifications is, you don't need to have a Carly upgraded suspension. You do not. You don't need to have, you know, reservoir shocks. You don't need to have all this stuff. They're demonstrating it on this vehicle because it's just a really badass vehicle, and I love the fact that they put it on here. But the reality is, is stock off of a dealership showroom floor, you can buy an F-350, and in some cases an F-250. You can buy the truck with the factory suspension, everything already in place, and hitch up and go. You don't need to do major upgrades to a truck to be able to tow something like this. So even though you see this really amazing F-350 completely decked out, and you see this Ram 4500, which we gotta go take a closer yeah, look we'll at. Yeah, we'll second. go take a look at that. Yeah, You don't absolutely need a truck. You don't even, you don't need anything close to a truck like that. You don't, you really don't. Yep, you yeah. don't. So don't think that you have to go out and buy something really nice and extravagant like this, and you're like, oh man, my F-350 that I just bought needs to have $10,000 worth of upgrades done to it before I can tow it. No, your F-350 stock, as long as you have the right payload numbers, right towing capacity, and your truck's in good mechanical condition, you, you should be fine. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff on here that we put on just because we love building these beautiful trucks that look integrated with the LV because, frankly, an LV, unless you're planning on putting this on land, and you can get it shipped, and a lot of our customers do. They get it shipped to their final destination, and that's the last time that it moves. But they might move it twice a year. Um, they hire a shipper, you know, just like if you're going to be you know, riding around in a boat, you know, you might not always be the one driving your boat. You might have someone, you know, captain your boat for you. Um, but a lot of our customers do take these out. And when they do, they like to integrate their truck as a component, componentized system. It's just one unified system with the trailer. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we do that brings the unity of these two things together uh, because we see these as one. And that's kind of the, you know, the visual, you've got all this cool stuff because the difference between the LV and like motorhomes, for example, is that, you know, this is your daily driver. So if you're traveling around the country and, you know, you're gonna go, go somewhere in this, you're off grid, this is what you're taking to get into town. Yeah. Yep, you don't need a towed vehicle. Buddy. You do not. So this is going to be kind of your, you know, also this can be base camp. Another thing that I like, you know, for folks that are taking these out in kind of an adventure vehicle way, you know, bring this up, set this as base camp, and then you can use the truck to get even further out there. So maybe you put a, a rooftop tent if that's the kind of thing that you're into, or you want to yep. use this to get even further. So, you know, we outfit these to, to have that. And, you know, probably the first and foremost thing that we do is we leverage the engine to provide additional power to the living vehicle. Now, you know, as long as you get the, the weight you know, the towing capacity and the payload capacity met, awesome. But we got a bunch of additional power in there that, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. being unused. So we install additional alternators to have the, you know, high power draw to feed the energy system for DC to DC power. Um, and that's in our energy integration package. So, you know, we also have cameras which, you know, feed direct through and these bullet cameras that are installed on four points of the LV, you know, those feed through a hardwire system right into the in-dash system. So those integrate with the factory OEM setup. Uh, you can also do a third party LED screen because sometimes I don't like having to push a button every time I want to see something in the, the, you know, the user interface yep, doesn't yep. quite work out well, you know, and I have preferences on various trucks, whether it's the Ford or the Ram or, you know, GMC. I mean, there's they all have benefits, right? I mean, we can argue to the end of the end of time, end of kingdom come until, you know, what, what makes a better truck. And we all have our opinions, but I got to say, they're all great trucks. They're all great. Yep. And I think the more you, the more you step back from being biased, the more you'll understand that. You know, if you're a Ram fan, that's all you've ever driven. You're like, I hate Ford. Go to a Ford dealership, hop in a Ford. If you're a Ford fan and that's all you've ever driven, go to a GM dealership, hop into a Chevy or a GMC. And I guarantee you'll find things that you like better about those trucks than the truck you own. You know, but in the end, if you're partial to one brand, great, because yeah. they're all great trucks. You're absolutely <laughs> you know? right. And in that, in that regard, we're not, you know, we're always exploring and experimenting and trying to understand what's great about different brands. And that's why we have two different brands here on site today. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and end this video because this video is really just to talk to you about the right truck to tow these types of trailers. The next video, we're actually gonna talk a lot about these trucks. We're gonna go into detail, because what year is this one? This is a 22. So this is a 22 model. So basically the year right before they changed it in 23 and many of you probably still have a 22 because you just got your 22 because it took so long to get in and then which year is that uh, that's also a 22 so there's a 22 ram 4500 we're gonna make a full video talking about both these trucks guys if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up we'll talk to you again real soon